my Lord Bishop, I thank you once more for this occasion. Dear Sisters of Charity of Jesus and Mary, teachers, students, and parents, Excellency Mr. Governor, Your Worship, the Mayor, all military authorities, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I would have visited this diocese a little after my arrival to your country. Your bishop, dear Bishop Raymond, had invited me. He was gracious in doing that. And we concluded arrangements and fixed the dates precisely for last May. But then the COVID-19 situation worsened. I am indeed happy to be in the diocese at last and also happy to celebrate this 125th anniversary of the arrival of the Sisters of Charity of Jesus and Mary in Sri Lanka. Thanks also, Sister Ajita, Fernando, Provincial Superior, and your council for the invitation. But here again, we had a difficulty with the date because as we just had at the beginning of the mass, it was to be on the 24th. But I had already accepted another invitation from the Silvestro Benedictine monks for their 175th anniversary, which we celebrated two days ago in Kandy. You had to shift the date of this celebration from the actual date in order to facilitate my presence. That was magnanimous of you and of Bishop Raymond who paid a great and diligent attention to the arrangements. Today's celebration is currently held here, the Sacred Heart Convent, the place where the first community of sisters began their mission 125 years ago at the request of the then Bishop of Gaul, Bishop Van Rit. The sisters set up this school and other schools later on to provide formal education to girls within the diocese. Dear sisters, while teaching remains your forte, I understand that you also run centers for the care of the disabled and for the elders. I just saw one now. And the education of children within, with learning difficulties. In addition, your mission includes crash and girls' homes, pastoral and social work. Thus, your congregation is involved in a whole range of charitable works spread out in different dioceses of the country. What a great way to be branches of the vine as we just had in the gospel. Branches of the true vine, that is Jesus Christ. You are a true instrument of God. 
In the name of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, I express heartfelt appreciations to you. Some of the children trained by you have taken up leadership roles in various fields in the country, fending for themselves and their families and serving their country. This is one of the reasons for you to celebrate and rejoice today. And we rejoice with you, dear sisters. I also learned of the dedicated services you rendered for several years at the Apostolic Nunciature, the House of the Holy Father in Sri Lanka. Unfortunately, that was before I came. How I wish I would have you again. I used the occasion to reiterate the gratitude of the Holy See to you, sisters. Through your congregation, God has indeed manifested his love to many, not only among Catholics, but everywhere your ministry is being carried out. With the motto of the congregation, Deus Caritas Est, God is love, you have continued to bear witness through your apostolate that God indeed is love. Indeed, charitable actions are the reflection of the love of God being manifested through man, through us. This takes me to the gospel that we have just read. Jesus presents himself as the true vine. The true vine that produces good fruit. And he presented his disciples, we, as the branches through which the good fruit is delivered. He is the vine. We are attached, the disciples, we are attached to the vine so that we produce the fruits of the vine. Interesting. As a branch cannot bear fruit all by itself, but must remain part of the vine, neither can we unless we remain, we Christians, attached to our leader our vine, the Christ. The fruit that Christ produces through us is not necessarily mangoes or oranges and all that, but they are the good virtues like love, justice, honesty, tolerance, peace, good services, and so on. So that looking at these fruits, looking at what we do, the services we render, God is love, Deus caritas est, looking at your mission, the world will really know that you are true branches attached to the true vine. In a way, we are the hands with which Christ works, and we are the leg with which he walks. We are part of Christ's body. He is the head, we are the members. On the day of our baptism, the church grafted, you know the word to graft, to graft a fruit, uh, sorry, um, a tree. You take a branch and graft it and attach it. So for us Christians, on the day of our baptism, in a way, the church grafted us, attached us to the main tree that is Christ. This is an analogy. We shouldn't take it too far. So, if we are grafted to the true vine, 
we produce the fruits of the vine. This is why St. Francis, the cells of cells, writes, the branch united and joined to the trunk bears fruits not by its own virtue, but by virtue of the trunk. Now by charity, we have been united to the Redeemer as members to the head. When you look back, dear sisters, you realize how the efforts made by your congregation has borne much fruit over the years. It is like the branch that is attached to the vine. Jesus tells us that only an intimate living fellowship with him will bear much fruit in our lives and in the lives of those around us. But you know what? Some branches are attached to the trunk, to the main tree. But still, they do not produce fruit. Why? Outwardly, they are joined to the vine. But as they are dry, they do not receive life and nourishment from it. They are bad branches. They also disrupt the growth of the vine and hamper the quantity and quality of the fruit produced. While pruning, the farmer cuts them away. We have bad branches everywhere, as we have good ones. We could also have them in the religious communities. We could have bad branches in our personal lives. Those things that disrupt our growth spiritually and even physically. What do we do with them? Those things that are obstacles in our lives, spiritually, even physically, if I have cholesterol, then I know I have to cut off fat, fatty food. So what do we do in our lives? We prune. We cut off those things that are obstructions. Not only spiritually, but also in our daily lives. One must have the courage to make these choices. To be able to prune, to, to cut off distractions, and then concentrate and cultivate the important things in one's life. It doesn't matter whether you were a Catholic, or you belong to any other religion, or you don't belong to any religion. We must know how to prune, to cut off distractions in our lives. It is the pruning of our vices. It is true, of course, in the spiritual life because holiness in this sense is like a sculpture. You know, sculpture. The statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary that we have here, I think they are sacred heart. Sculpture, carved things. Our spiritual life, in a way, is like a sculpture. Why do I say that? The great Italian painter and draftsman of the Renaissance, Leonardo da Vinci, defined sculpture as the art of removing, removing, cutting away. The other art consists in adding something. We put on something. For example, 
we add color to the canvas in painting. Stone on stone in architecture, like building a house, note after note in music, etc. But only sculpture consists of pruning, removing, of taking away the pieces of marble that are in excess, so that the figure that one has in mind can emerge. This is what perfection means the act of removing, eh, like a sculpture. By removing, we make, we remove the useless behaviors, the useless attitudes, useless pieces of our lives. We remove them, cut them off, we stop them. This acts in the spiritual sense often lead us to sin and to fall. Let this, dear sisters, be one of the resolves that you make on this great occasion of your jubilee. Being able to cut off the pieces, the bad things that disrupt your growth personally and as a community and as a congregation so that we will not be like dry branches, but good branches attached to the good vine, so we produce good fruits. As we know, jubilees are celebrated usually to have a break and start again. You have done 125 years. Today you stop. You look back to what you have achieved all this time. You look back to the mistakes you have made. And then, I say, you make the resolve, the resolution to correct, to improve on your successes and to prune, cut off your mistakes. You chose this gospel of today. And it is a wonderful piece. It helps us to, es to explain what we are doing today. So, dear sisters, I am sure this jubilee will enable you to make evaluations, live out past mistakes, and forge ahead with a new enthusiasm. I pray and wish that you, as a province, be reinvigorated to experience the love of Jesus and continue to reflect that love in your mission and breaking new grounds in serving those in need. Deus caritas est. It is an occasion to pay tribute to your pioneer sisters for the work they were able to do over the years under difficult conditions. While reiterating my sincere thanks and congratulating you on the 125 years of service in Sri Lanka, I wish and pray for God's abundant grace for your future endeavors and that you continue to be good branches, deriving your vigor from the true vine that is Christ. In conclusion, I wish to use this channel and verbum television I learned is here with us to remind all our faithful and all Sri Lankans as I did this morning in the cathedral at the reception ceremony, to remind everybody not to forget that unity is strength. There is certainly the need as citizens of this country to join hands in working towards the welfare of everyone. As the Holy Father Pope Francis pointed out in his encyclical letter, 
on fraternity and social friendship, fraternity. We have common needs as human beings, despite religious and linguistic differences, we are a global community. We are all in the same boat. We are one person's problems are the problems of all. No one is saved alone. We can only be saved together. Let us not forget this. I wish that Sri Lanka continues to be the pearl of the East from all perspectives and particularly in its rich history and civilization and harness the benefits of its variety of religions and peoples. Dear sisters, now I read the message, the apostolic blessing of the Holy Father Pope Francis, which was sent to you on this solemn occasion.